playing on Britannia map with capitals, whether with blizzards or not, one of the best territories could be this big one. As if your opponent's territory and capital picking is bad, then usually you will be able to hold at least one region from one side or another, and always get more troops than your opponent does. In this current game example I was able to successfully capture and hold 7 and 4 troop regions. And that gave me a huge advantage, while my opponent was struggling to hold even a single region. I was always able to invade them. Then they tried to properly guard them as well, but obviously with attacking advantage I had no problems invading them at all, and with already having quite more troops than them, they just had to give up. If your opponent going first picks that territory though, then you could possibly go with this one. And if your opponent for some reasons decides to put their army somewhere else and especially in an isolated place, then you could get a lot of advantage against them too. Like in this game example my opponent put their capital in a territory which could get easily blocked and could not necessarily be unleashed in order for me to invade them into their region. So as you can see I quickly took over the advantage against them. And then waited until I have an additional big troops army which guaranteed me a 100% blitz roll victory. If you play with opponent who was decent with their capital picking choice, and all you do is going back and forth attacking each other territories. Then as long as 3 rounds passed, you see that your opponent's capital became relatively weak, and especially if you're going second, consider taking a very favorable capital blitz roll for yourself, before your opponent gave it a try for themselves. Like in this scenario my opponent's capital ended up being with only 9 troops, because my opponent captured tons of territories, so if I had recaptured them, then my capital would have become very weak as well, and with opponent trading in a set, they would have been able to get a decent percentage chance to successfully blitz my capital, so instead of giving a very good opportunity for them, I decided to take it for myself. I had even 83% chance of winning and what could have been better than that when you see that you might be in a disadvantageous situation. In the simple world map or basically in all other maps if you're going second, then when playing with manual setup make sure to not let your opponent fully take some of the continents, because they will get a huge troops advantage over you, and if not instantly win, then will drastically weaken you by a lot. Your continents will get invaded anyways, so you will end up being with no additional continental troop bonuses at all either way, differently than your opponent. If your opponent blocks their biggest army, then make sure to take advantage of it. Don't unleash it and instead of that try to capture some continents which you know you will be successfully able to hold. For example in this current game with the help of blizzards I saw the opportunity to capture both of the Americas while only having two borders to guard. So even though the blue player got 3 additional troops for a turn, I've got even 5 of them. And then even though I've got a bad blitz roll crushing blues army, I still completely nailed this game because of a huge territories difference. If your opponent put their troops to one big army too, then it can be very tempting to blitz it, but probably it's only the best to do it, only if it's necessary, like if your opponent's army has an accessibility to your army, or if you don't see any other good choice other than blitzing. Yes, attackers have the advantage over the defenders, and especially when it comes to playing with balanced blitz dice rolls. But you're not still guaranteed to win them, they could go either way. Well, if armies are huge like made of 100 troops, then go all way blitzing your opponent's army first, but when it comes to medium sized armies of equal size like 30 troops, then it's better to play safe if possible, rather than to risk, assuming it's very important for you not to lose, like if you're playing against lower ranked opponent. As you can see from the examples the luck can take a very huge role, so only consider attacking your opponent's biggest army, only when it's necessary, like when your opponent can access your army by themselves, so in that case you want to blitz them first, because you will have better odds to win as an attacker. But if your opponent's army doesn't have access to blitz you, while yours can, then instead of blitzing, see if there's any good strategy you could pull off to increase your advantage. So now let me show you what I mean by that. In this game's example my opponent's army is blocked from me, so what I can do? With the help of blizzards it's possible for me to capture and hold South America plus Australia with only two borders to guard. 
In their turn my opponent captures your but still leaves their army blocked, so what do I do? I successfully expand to North America. And only then my opponent fortifies their army next to me, but the blitz roll won't be fatal for me anymore, because either way it goes, I'll still have some other armies and more troops in general. Now in another game example, I successfully capture and hold North America for a turn. My opponent fortifies their army next to me, so now I'm forced to blitz, but I can still take a potential attacking advantage by blitzing my opponent's army first. And in this current game example I totally nailed it. My opponent captured South America, leaving their biggest army in it. While I saw the opportunity to capture Europe, Asia and Australia, while being able to successfully hold them. Then my opponent fortified their biggest army next to me, so I invaded them into South America, and then I used manual dice rolls to weaken their biggest army. My opponent then attacked me, but at the end I still had more troops in overall and with still holding South America, I prevailed and won easily. And this game example is probably the most interesting one. In this example my opponent captured North America, but since they didn't split their army, I was able to invade it easily and that's what I did. And then with my biggest army captured South America plus Australia. My opponent then captured North America finally splitting their army, meaning that if I want to invade it, then I have to fortify a good amount of troops from my biggest army. So that's what I did. My opponent invaded me into Australia and combined their armies into one. I invaded them into North America and used manual rolls to weaken their army as I knew that my army is going to get crushed anyways, so I wanted to leave them as less attacking advantage as possible. In their turn they invaded me into all my continents leaving their biggest army in Russia. So I added one more troop in North America, and recaptured my continents, without attacking the bottom territory of Africa so my opponent's biggest army would stay blocked. In their turn they just captured China, and since they left their army there I was able to capture North America. With them trading in a set they obviously invaded it. But since they kept their army in the territory of China again, I was able to recapture it with no problems again, and since I already hold South America and Australia, I knew that I'm in a winning situation. Then they finally fortified their army out of the blocked place, but it was way too late, with already having more troops than them and with additionally trading in a set at 3 cards, I have fully taken them out. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend watching one of the 1v1 strategy playlists. Apply these tactics to your games and crush your opponents with ease.